Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Wallace. How are you? I just wanted to do this quick uh, review video uh, just because um, we had a chance last week in the beginning of the week to talk a little bit about reconstruction, but with the election and everything, uh, I know you had done a homework assignment about Andrew Johnson's policies, but I just wanted to return to do a really quick uh, review video for you. Uh, this video will include a little bit about Andrew Johnson, some of his uh, proposals for reconstruction, and then especially some of the tension that existed between the radical Republican members of Congress and uh, Andrew Johnson. So some of that tension leads us into radical reconstruction, which will be largely led by Congress, and that's what we'll be uh, addressing next week in class. So just a couple of quick things uh, that we can we can point out uh, a little bit about uh, Andrew Johnson. Uh, just remember that he is following um, uh, into the presidency after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. So he was Lincoln's vice president. Uh, Lincoln had really selected Andrew Johnson very, very specifically during the election of 1864 um, because he wanted somebody who was like a war Democrat. You know, Lincoln was trying to come across as not really a significant abolitionist. So he selected somebody who was in favor of keeping the union together and going to war for that. Uh, that secession was problematic, but also somebody who who um, in the case of Andrew Johnson, he's not somebody who really uh, found uh, slavery problematic. He wasn't seeking uh, new rights for free people. He was seeking kind of a you know collapse of or, or seeking a you know ability to keep the union together. Uh, he's known as a Jacksonian Democrat, so he kind of follows some of the ideas of Andrew Jackson. Uh, he's anti-aristocrat. He's born in uh, the Carolinas. He is born very poor, so he has some life experience that um, kind of caused him to think ill of people who were wealthy planters. Um, even though he does become wealthy over the course of his lifetime, he kind of has this chip on his shoulder. Uh, he's also a bit of a white supremacist. Uh, he does move from the Carolinas to Tennessee, and he becomes active in the government there. So he's, you know, in the legislature, he's in, uh, he's governor, and he largely has uh, very racist ideas. Um, he did agree with Lincoln that the Union should stay together, and during the beginnings of the secession, um, we see Tennessee will ultimately opt out of the Union, uh, but Andrew Johnson chooses to keep his uh, seat in the federal government. He's the only person to really do that, so um, he's kind of seen as a little bit of a hero uh, in the time period. Uh, some of the ideas for his presidential plan, uh, you know, kind of fit his, like, you know, ideas and kind of who he is as a person. Uh, historians will look back on Johnson's plan and say this is very, very lenient, uh, like Lincoln's presidential plan was. Um, Johnson has a few ideas. He's going to offer amnesty uh, to Confederates upon a simple oath. So, you know, Lincoln, it was like 10 percent, and the way Davis built was like 50 percent. This is like pretty much anybody can get uh, kind of a pass back into the Union, um, and it's just a simple oath. Uh, there's some exception, the very, very wealthy, so people with property over $20,000 and Confederate civil and military officers um, are not able to just have that simple oath. <laughs> They're going to have to go through a little bit more sophisticated of a pardon process. They're going to have to come and see Andrew Johnson, you know, in person. There's also some, uh, he does create um, the structure so that southern states, in order to come back into the Union, they do have to establish certain things. So they do have to repudiate slavery. So he will come to accept the 13th Amendment as kind of the federal law of the land. They do have to repudiate secession, and they also have to basically, you know, ignore any state debts uh, that they have outstanding. But that's it. There's no like rights for freed people or rights to vote or land or any of those things. So some of the things that we had talked about the other day in class about how free people had certain things that they were hoping uh, Reconstruction might bring, you know, this isn't on like the list for Andrew Johnson. Uh, he does name provisional governors in Confederate states, and he calls for them to oversee elections. So the process for um, states coming back into the Union will be that there will be constitutional conventions and new state constitutions that would then include these um, ideas like the 13th Amendment and whatnot. Uh, the effects of this, you know, um, really only a few um, leading Confederates uh, will be disenfranchised. Most 
Confederates are going to grovel in front of Andrew Johnson, who will create this system of pardons that many, many people will have. So in terms of Confederates being left out of the government system, that's not the case. They're largely involved. In fact, people will waltz back or want to waltz back into Congress, you know, like with their Confederate uniforms on, you know, really upsetting uh, radical Republicans. Um, and we see pardon planter aristocrats uh, brought back to political power. So we see kind of the state um, organizations, the groups of people who are going to be serving in the federal government from the South, the groups of people who will be in the state legislative bodies. These are going to be people who largely had political power before, uh, you know, the Civil War and now would continue with that. So that's like a big aspect. And radical Republicans are very enraged that we have essentially the exact same group of people, you know, in power uh, in the southern states. There's growing northern alarm. Uh, we do see some of the southern state constitutions are not actually going to have the minimum requirement. So very sketchy when it comes to um, repudiation of slavery, um, whether or not states are going to uh, enable some repudiation of secession. Uh, so there's some weaknesses in the state constitutions. Johnson grants these very special pardons to all these people who were officers. And so that creates a lot of tension. And we also get a revival of southern defiance, lots of the Confederates who are back in power become defiant in the way they want to uh, rule. And we see the um, passing of particular legislation, especially uh, known as the Black Codes. Like during the time of slavery, there had been all those colonial slave codes. Those slave codes, you know, kind of put limits on uh, behavior where people could travel and what time people could be out and things like that for individuals who were enslaved. In this case, now we're talking about free people. Uh, uh, but free people who um, are going to be under much different laws than everybody else in society. And one example that you looked at in a homework assignment was the Mississippi Black Codes, which gives you like a very specific idea of within the state of Mississippi, how the Black Codes were structured. And um, they are very detailed. Certain activities are completely banned, right, for people of color. Uh, this includes things like vagrancy, card playing, um, things that kind of smack of like recreation or anything that feels like it's um, not necessarily uh, productive labor. Uh, the other part of the Mississippi Black Codes that really um, kind of needs to be emphasized is that there is a charge for people who violate the code. So if somebody, for example, is found guilty of vagrancy, they're just like hanging around on the street and they're not applying themselves to some sort of productive work. And of course, these are people who are recently uh, freed from slavery. Uh, so, you know, lack of skills, lack of land, all those particular challenges, uh, the, um, the Mississippi Black Code suggests that in order to get somebody to pay the fine, if the individual uh, himself could not pay the fine, then they would be um, asked to work uh, for somebody until they could pay off that fine. So you have, in a sense, the Black Codes have this like, you know, sense that there is a component of it that feels a lot like enslavement um, because there are people, you know, kind of being dragged in uh, to court that they have violated the code. And then in response, they have to pay money or they have to work in order to, you know, meet that debt. So um, like really pro problematic. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we also get, you know, now this system of uh, race relations that's based on uh, white supremacy. And uh, some of this plays out, you know, economically too, because freed people are seeking land. Oftentimes the arrangement becomes one where in some cases, um, black Americans end up working for their uh, old master. And instead of working directly for wages, which is what like the expectation uh, was that say somebody like Lincoln had, um, individuals were going to be working on uh, their um, former master's land or some other um, plantation owner's land uh, and largely working um, not for their own wages, but working to produce, you know, for almost like a feudal type of system, working some uh, of the goods may be kept for um, oneself, but there's also goods then that uh, get uh, distributed uh, to the plantation owner. So there's, you know, kind of a, a minimizing of some of the uh, expectation. And you can see where you see like the maroon colors on this map, uh, places like South Carolina into Alabama, all the way into Texas. Uh, these are 
spaces where we see um, sharecropping at the rate of uh, 35 to 80 percent. OK, um, we do definitely see um, Congress reacting to this plan. And so what Congress will do is actually bar southern congressional delegates, um, members of the uh, Republican Party, especially in Congress, are very adamant that um, letting the southern state leaders who were former Confederates, you know, back into Congress is just going to recreate, you know, a whole bunch of the issues, uh, maybe even a, a move back to slavery. So there's actually um, basically a closing of the door that these folks can't come into Congress. Um, and there's a joint committee on reconstruction that's created within Congress. Okay. Um, the uh, 1866 Act. Um, there's going to be some kind of going back and forth between Andrew Johnson and members of Congress. And one thing Andrew Johnson will do will be to start to exercise the veto. He does veto the Freedmen's Bureau's bill. This is something that has to be like um, re-emphasized uh, every uh, single year. Uh, Congress actually um, will override that veto. Uh, Johnson also vetoes the 1866 Civil Rights Act, one of the first uh, civil rights acts, and um, Congress will pass both bills. And these acts have the intention of creating greater rights for uh, formerly enslaved people. Uh, I'm going to skip that because we'll do that in class. Uh, one thing about radical reconstruction, and I'll note this because it relates to a little bit of a homework assignment, the next thing that the radicals will do, and when you think of radical reconstruction, think of this as um, an act of Congress where Congress will largely create um, a position where the federal government has almost to some degree military rule in the South. It's not quite military rule, but the exercise of military districts is employed. And um, there will be additional components than what Johnson had at play, right? Some of these additional components will include things like the 14th Amendment, and you have a homework assignment about the 14th Amendment, uh, but we'll note a few things about it. It does um, enable birthright citizenship. It's the first time we see this uh, in America. It also provides to some degree a constitutional guarantee of the rights and security of freed people. There's wide debate in the Congress about how this can be done with some radicals wanting to give the right to vote to free people and some people very concerned about that. So that debate kind of um, plays out in Congress in 1867 and 1868. But we do see um, some attempt within the amendment that gets passed uh, for a constitutional guarantee of the rights of uh, free people. Uh, there's also some uh, interest in trying to limit Confederate political power, so taking some of the Southern officers and dialing down their ability to participate in the federal government. And there's also uh, an interest in kind of using the federal government's funds to basically pay the union debt, but not any debt, you know, uh, kind of uh, taken on by the Confederacy. Uh, and, you know, most importantly, in the 14th Amendment, um, you know, in addition to citizen right and equal protection clause and a couple of other things, uh, the southern states um, are going to be punished uh, for denying the right to vote to black citizens. So even though there isn't um, a, you know, quote unquote, right to vote in the 14th Amendment uh, for black men, there is a punishment for states that do deny that right to vote. OK, and that uh, would be especially for black men. Uh, the last couple things I'll mention is that in 1866, there are these um, midterm elections, right? So you have presidential elections, then maybe in between the presidential administrations, you know, you end up with um, these elections where many members of Congress, you know, kind of get selected. And um, this becomes like the talking points of our day might be things like issues related to immigration or um, issues uh, re related to L LGBTQ rights, or we might have issues related to, um, you know, uh, things like uh, reproductive freedom, all those various issues that we know are kind of contentious in the time of 1866. This is like a referendum on radical reconstruction. What do people think of the radicals? Um, Johnson decides to go around the country to push his plan. Uh, he speaks to all these different groups and he's really like kind of an outrageous speaker, uh, somebody who says some, uh, you know, unfortunate things and uh, he gets some enemies in the crowd uh you know this <laughs> seems to 
to have some familiarity to us. Uh, in any case, um, Republicans will win a majority in both houses and they'll get, gain control.